Hello, 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 buddy. It is I, J Malls of J Malls Gaming, here today to give my first impressions of Genshin Impact. Yes, I finally started playing it. Let's talk about it. Alright, so for those who may not be aware of what Genshin Impact is, it is a free to play game developed by Mihoyo. I think I pronounced that right. It is essentially We Breath of the Wild. That's a very, very, very popular meme going around about this game, especially during launch, and it's kind of true. At least it is for the first part of the game. The part I'm still in. I'm only a couple of hours into the game. I just got the monster, and I just did my first mini dungeon. And so far, the game's really freaking good. I do not know how this game's going to progress. I do not know how invasive or annoying the is going to become. I've heard that you can completely play this game free to play, so long as you don't mind some grind. I don't. So let's talk about it, and let's start off with the thing that drew me in probably the most to this game. Besides it being a Breath of the Wild style game, and that's the combat. Because, my god, is the combat in this game freaking good. Elemental pairings is such a great concept for an open world exploratory RPG like Genshin. Because it makes the world and encounters change depending on your party composition. And that just makes every little encounter feel different depending upon who you have in your party. And the characters I've played around with have all felt different and unique and I can get some interesting combos going. Beidou has an electric shield, right? That also does a damaging slash. And I can then swap to this other character who is also lightning based. Razor for another lightning slash. Or, if an enemy has a shield or something with near grass, I can have Amber shoot a fire arrow at it, right? Light either the grass or the sh wooden shield on fire. I swap over to the Pro Tag and use a wind spell that absorbs the fire to be a giant fireball, or I use this ultimate, which is a fire tornado. It's freaking cool, and it really helps vary up the gameplay and make each encounter feel kind of fresh and new, depending upon. The elements that are presented in the fight. It's pretty freaking ingenious in my opinion. And I really hope that systems like this become more pervasive throughout open world RPGs. Because it just makes the world more interesting and more fun. Because it, especially for a game like Genshin that has a lot of different characters you can play as. That have their own elemental affinities. It just makes your mind start thinking about the various possibilities that there are. And the various combos you can do, or in the various situations you are, what character might be better for the situation compared to this other character. And really, this only works because the world is absolutely beautiful, and the mechanics to climb and to navigate it are fun as well. I don't think the stamina in Genshin is, feels as restrictive as it does in Breath of the Wild when you first start off. I haven't found a way to really increase my stamina. Maybe it exists, I don't know about that though. But so far, navigating the world is not a hassle, it's fun. Because you also can basically glide. If you're familiar with Breath of the Wild, you know the glide feature. And if you can find giant wind funnels, or updrafts, you can glide around the map, it's really nice. And another thing that Genshin does that it rewards this open world and makes this open world that's the main focal point of the game, especially early on, is the reward structure of Genshin Impact so far. Because it's something that I've really come to appreciate as I've played more of this game. Having treasure chests and little puzzles to be able to get more treasure che treasure chests is a really nice reward and is a great incentive to explore more of the open world because you find different ingredients, you might get some more money. I believe it's called more in this game, you might find some weapons, you might even find I components to level your character or the weapons your character has. It's really freaking clever and really nice because it gives you a nice diverse array of rewards, at least early on. And so we've talked about the gameplay mostly, just from my experience. Again, I've only played a few hours, so I don't have that much to talk about. But Let's talk about the music for like 30 seconds because by god the music is extremely fitting and it amplifies the sense of exploration and discovery beautifully. I really enjoy the music. It's very atmospheric. It's not like a very... You're not going to have a bunch of really catchy themes that are going to have you humming along to the beat. It's very atmospheric and just... If you're familiar with Breath of the Wild... I'm going to keep making Breath of the Wild references because my main point of comparison. If you're familiar with Breath of the Wild, when that game had music, and how that 
style of soundtrack fit into the overall world. It's similar to that. So the music is really fitting so far, and I really like it. So let's go into the main topic. Gotcha. Okay, so for those who may not be familiar with what Gotcha is, it's essentially the monetization that a lot of mobile games use. And it is, you know, not the most well-respected across the board. Why? Because it's essentially a fancy loot box. That's essentially what it is. You spend a currency that you probably have to buy another currency to be able to transition it into this other currency to be able to buy the wishes, as they're called in this game. Not entirely sure how it works in Genshin entirely, because all the terminology kind of goes over my head. But I'm just, I was just talking there about what games tend to do on mobile for those gotcha-style mechanics. And... Because if you're buying one currency, they, you're probably more inclined to buy that one currency than if you're just buying the actual loot box itself. It's this weird psychological thing. But in Genshin, essentially the idea is you want to get these wishes. And for these wishes, you can get a weapon or you can get a character. And they have various levels, and they go up to rank 5. I got three rank 4 characters and a bunch of weapons. So, I got... Beto, Razor, and this maid that uses a claymore. I forget her name. So those are the three characters I got. I got a whole bunch of weapons. I got a three-star sword for the for my main character and a whole bunch of claymores as well, which was kind of nice. Kind of got lucky in that regard. And so when you get these characters, they're level one, so you have to level them up. And you have a bunch of these items that you can, that you can get for exploration... By turning iron ore into the blacksmith and monster to gain character level ups. You can also level up each individual weapon so they do more damage. There's a whole bunch of things pertaining to this whole gotcha system that the game works off. Because again, the game is a free to play, so they're going to have to get the money somehow. And I don't like gotcha in theory, in, you know, fundamentally. So. I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that th this is the monetization route that the game chose. I need to play more to see how, how really intrusive it is, because I've heard conflicting things. But I think the overall sentiment is that if you want to play free-to-play, the game is not difficult enough until really later on, I think. Where you would really be incentivized to have that, to use gotcha. To buy these e extra wishes. And if the game gives you a decent enough steady supply of free wishes. So, I'm going to need to play more and be able to report back on that, on that particular issue. So, take from that what you will. Be careful about it if you have difficulty with gotcha style mechanics like that. Because they are present in this game and you do unlock them. Later on, you unlock them in, when you get to like the Monstat and do like a couple of quests. Outside of that, I've done one mini dungeon, which I'm showing you in the video as well. It was all right. It, it was essentially just a chain of monster kills, which was pretty all right. Had a nice little unique environment compared to the rest of the world. I'm interested to see how they go from here. I'm not going to judge how this entire game and its dungeons work based on the very first mini dungeon you do, right? Going to give it some more time. I'm really enjoying what I've been playing so far. And I'm interested to see what follows, how the story progresses, how it develops, how these characters get introduced. Because I do hear that the story is a strength of this game. And you can actually collect books. I actually spent a quite a little bit of time just reading the books that you can unlock in the library and around the world in this game. Because it has some pretty interesting little stories. But you don't need to read them if you don't care about it. I haven't read most of them yet. I'm going to wait until I unlock most of them and I'll probably read them over time. So, yeah. So far, TLDR... Fun combat, gr g really good music that's fitting. World is absolutely beautiful. Gotcha can suck it, but so far it's not, it's not like, being that bad. And overall, I'm just having a blast. So, thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you are a fan of Breath of the Wild, you'll probably like this game. Again, there's no weapon durability system, I think. It's really just a matter of upgrading your weapons, which is kind of interesting, because it's going in the reverse order of Breath of the Wild in a weird way. Where in Breath of the Wild, you're trying to constantly get a new weapon to before it breaks, while in this game, you're constantly just trying to upgrade your weapon and strengthen it. 
kind of funny how that works. So thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe if you like the video and you want to see more content. I know I would appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.